here. I'm very glad that we got out the spotlights because no one has looked at this closely in about six or seven years. I found this piece in the basement of a house on 19th Street, 1727 19th Street, which is an Italianate palace, which looks like a row house. It was, uh, the house was built <clears throat> for Daniel Chester French, whom we all know as the designer of the Lincoln Memorial. And it was his DC residence and his studio. He went on the grand tour in the 1860s or 70s, and he brought back incredible treasures because he was rich. His family was rich. They could afford anything. That's what happens when you come from New Hampshire. <laughs> and uh, he found this in Germany, and he brought it home, and uh, he really didn't know what to do with it because there was no way to display it. So he very ingeniously removed uh, a Chinese silk tapestry that was inside that frame and installed the glass piece and used it as a fire screen for 50 years. So it was in front of an enormous fireplace in the basement where he also had a casting studio where he did the hands and I think the feet of Abraham Lincoln. So when Mr. French died, uh, a friend of mine, client by the name of Julia Heflin uh, and her husband bought the house in the 1930s and it remained it, they got everything in the house that had been there with Daniel Chester French house and contents and they lived there for 70 years so I found this after I got the job of selling the estate which was in the late 2000s 2000, 2000 7, 8, 9, 10 um, however, I knew it was spectacularly beautiful, uh, and once we lit it up, we saw clearly it's St. Francis <clears throat> as a bishop, which is unusual treatment, surrounded by the ferocious animals of the, of the forest, <clears throat> forest that's in the background with that very scary tree, uh, and there are any number of medieval ferocious animals there, wild lions and bears and uh, a very fierce unicorn and boars and uh, also sort of a very nice but truculent heart and St. Francis in his red robes reading the Bible or actually reading Bible stories to the animals whom as we all know he could communicate with and instructing them in the values and mores and important bits of Christianity. And you can see in the background the uh, the the stone rough stones of of the uh, retreat that Saint Francis had in in Assisi where he lived. Now, as it turns out, this is not an Italian rendition of the great Saint Francis story. By the way, my favorite painting on the planet is the St. Francis of Assisi, the Frick Collection, <clears throat> uh, where he's received the stigmata and he's walking into the forest where the animals are. So one day I brought this piece to the gallery and a very elderly lady came in and asked me to shine a light on it and did. And she said, ah, but this is very important. And I said, well, I, I think it is too, but I know nothing about it. And she said, ah, but I know everything about it because I am Joanna Booth, <laughs> the greatest antiquarian of ancient things on the planet. And I said, ah, I have visited your gallery in Chelsea. So she said, you here have a piece from the time of Albrecht Dürer from the late 16th, uh, late 15th sorry, late 16th, early 17th century. And she said, Northern, this covers a lot of territory, but uh, what we now would think of as Northern, Northern Germany, <clears throat> um, possibly Nuremberg, possibly Thuringia, 
the exact locale is not known. It could be traced because of the, the sinuous nature of those, those scary trees and those very lush leaves at the top left. Um, anyway, Joanna Booth suggested to me a name of a, of a the leading authority on Gothic uh, glass, which I promptly lost. Uh, so it's been languishing here in the dark for the last 10 years or so, and now it's brought out to the light. Um, she did say, as I recall, that it was the largest intact piece she had ever seen, and that it was probably the window of a, of a chapel in a castle. Um, the reds are incredible. They're done red, the green uh, and the reds are done with uh, gold and precious stones that are crushed. Uh, and the, uh, the painting is incredibly intact. There is a, a protective cracked piece of glass behind the leaded glass, uh, which is holding it mounted into this Chinese screen. And I would think it's probably one of our great unheralded treasures in this uh, gallery of endless treasures. <laughs>